My name is Dr. Sieben Huner and I have been practicing medicine for over 40 years. Since 2005 my team and I have also been conducting stem cell therapy. Stem cells have regenerative properties. Tissues that have lost their normal functions can be restored with stem cells. Doctors can successfully use the methods of classical medicine while supplementing them with stem cell therapy. One clinical case stands out in my mind. After only two courses of therapy, the patient was able to get up from her wheelchair and began to walk. Good afternoon Dr. Sieben Huner. Thank you very much for taking the time to give us an interview. We are very happy to be here. Please tell us about the discovery of cell therapy. Oh, sure. Stem cells were discovered long ago. These are cells that have not yet differentiated into those of certain organs. They are present in different parts of the human body. These cells can be found in the internal organs, in adipose tissue, in the bone marrow, and in the blood. Thanks to the properties of these cells, the therapy was developed. Can you explain the rapidly growing popularity of stem cell therapy? Of course. Everything is very simple. Tissues that have lost their normal functions can be restored with stem cells. How long have you been using stem cell therapy? Well, I can give you the exact answer. Since moving here in 2005. Dr. Stoll, with what diseases do patients most often come to you? Stem cells are regenerative cells, that is, they have regenerative properties. If tissues do not work properly or any dysfunction occurs due to age-related changes, such as arthrosis or cartilage degeneration, stem cells can be used to restore tissues. Such restoration is also possible in the case of organ damage, for example, in liver cirrhosis. In what medical spheres are stem cells used? The scope of stem cells application is very wide, since they can restore any cell in the human body. I can enumerate diseases for which stem cells are used. The list begins with the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, then moves on to the Alzheimer's disease, that is, age-related degenerative changes, ataxia, autism, autoimmune diseases, borreliosis, dementia, diabetes mellitus, glaucoma, hair loss, kidney and liver diseases, including liver cirrhosis, and finally, multiple sclerosis. Stem cells can also be used for spinal muscular atrophy, up to paralysis, and what is more, in cases of nerve fiber dysfunction, paralysis, and even muscle injuries. Stem cell therapy is also popular among athletes. For example, football players with muscle injuries recover faster with the use of stem cells. Cell therapy for football players is more often carried out abroad than in Germany. Football coaches complain that Germany needs more offers for stem cell treatments to restore muscles in football players. How effective is radiation therapy for throat cancer? The concept of the most effective is not really suitable in this case. I would rather say that we achieve results that we previously could only dream of. I would especially like to highlight arthrosis, in which stem cells restore cartilage. Other conditions also include liver cirrhosis and diseases with kidney function impairment. In such cases, dialysis or kidney transplantation is required. Early stem cell therapy can, however, save the kidney. Patients suffering from liver cirrhosis have hope for the formation of new liver cells since liver cells affected by the pathological process cannot perform their function anymore. However, there is a chance to influence the formation of new cells. Brain diseases or peripheral nerve pathologies can also be cured by stimulating the formation of new nerve cells or by reactivating the patient's own cells of the nervous system. In such cases, the essence of stem cell therapy is not to form new cells but to increase the activity of the patient's existing cells, whose activity has decreased, for example, by 50%. How effective is stem cell therapy compared to conventional therapies? It is impossible to compare the results of treatment directly because everything is very individual. In some patients, stem cell therapy gives better results, while in others, classical treatments are more effective. Each case should be assessed individually. When can radiation therapy be the only treatment? 
The effectiveness varies according to the disease. Let's discuss, for example, in an underactive thyroid in which the regeneration is not as successful as we'd like. In this case, the doctor must also restore the thyroid gland function, as the regenerative process is impossible without it. In addition, other metabolic disorders develop in the body, which also must be taken into account. As a result, the outcome is not solely dependent on stem cell therapy. There are also other aspects that have to be considered for the treatment to be effective. When does stem cell therapy give the best results? The best results can be obtained when treating joints, from knee and hip injections to other joints. The internal organs, such as the liver, kidneys, and especially the brain, can be successfully restored as well. In certain brain pathologies, when its function is far from 100%, significant improvements are noted after treatment. I cannot say that the organ will be restored completely. Nonetheless, brain function can be significantly improved. In this case, everything is also very individual and depends on many factors that we need to take into account and deal with. For example, if we speak about autism, and multiple sclerosis. I also remember a special case. After two courses of treatment, the patient was able to get out of her wheelchair and began to walk again but was unable to jump. At least, we've managed to restore her walking skills. The conclusion is the same. I repeat what I said at the very beginning of our conversation. In addition to the methods of traditional medicine, there are others. Furthermore, these can be well combined. Doctors can successfully use the methods of classical medicine while supplementing them with stem cell therapy. How is stem cell therapy performed? It depends on which stem cells are used. Previously, the bone marrow was the most common source of stem cells. Now adipose tissue-derived stem cells are also used. You may claim that it sounds quite strange, but it is effective. Stem cells can be harvested from adipose tissue, since there is a lot of adipose tissue in the human body. Therefore there are also many stem cells in this tissue, and their number is not limited as, for example, in the bone marrow, up to 500 million stem cells can be harvested. We had a special case in our practice. We've managed to harvest 5 billion stem cells, but this is too much. The sources of stem cells are therefore blood, adipose tissue, and bone marrow. As a rule, stem cells are harvested from these organs. With what diseases do patients most often come for stem cell therapy? Since we are talking about the restoration of all organs and tissues, this is a very large, if not countless, number of diseases. The most common conditions are diabetes mellitus and eye damage against its background, that is degenerative changes. These are also dysfunctions of the internal organs, such as the kidneys and liver. Hair loss is another common pathology. Multiple sclerosis and autoimmune diseases are quite common as well. Did you have cases in your practice where stem cell therapy was the only suitable option for a patient? A good example is liver cirrhosis. There are no other treatment options for this disease. Stem cell therapy, however, gives a chance for recovery. Are there any contraindications for stem cell therapy? In general, there are no contraindications, but there are still certain limitations. These include pregnancy and childhood. Treatment should begin no earlier than the age of one to two years, and it is even better to start no earlier than at the age of three years. The source of stem cells in this case is blood, not adipose tissue. Can stem cell therapy be combined with other treatment methods, for example, with hormone therapy? In fact, we even need to do it. It is necessary to use every opportunity to influence the metabolic processes in the patient's body to improve the therapeutic effect. How do stem cells work in patients with optic nerve atrophy? Optic nerve atrophy is a violation of its normal function. A patient therefore needs restoration of the optic nerve. In such cases, stem cells are injected not into the optic nerve itself but into the region of the optic nerve. In addition, the tissues are stimulated with magnetic fields so that the stem cells know where to go, since after the injection, they penetrate into all tissues. And if an inflammatory process occurs in the body, the cells go to the inflammatory focus to eliminate it. We will therefore not be able to achieve the the main goal of treatment. First, the inflammation should be treated, and then stem cell therapy should be started. What results can patients with multiple sclerosis expect after stem cell therapy? Multiple sclerosis cannot be completely cured with stem cells, but the patient's condition can improve significantly. 
treatment outcomes will be impressive. As in the case when after two courses of therapy, the patient was able to get out of a wheelchair and walk with a cane, following which she regained her walking skills and could climb stairs. And now the last question, what would you recommend to patients who have doubts about stem cell therapy? My advice is just to get more information. The patient can contact us, tell us specifically about his case, and find out if this therapy will be effective for him. We will then be able to give recommendations based on the patient's case. We will recommend which stem cells are best to use and what other treatment methods can be considered. Stem cells give excellent results when combined with other treatments. As I said, the patient will be more aware of this treatment method after receiving this information and will be able to make a correct and reasonable decision. Doctor. Dr. Sieben Huner, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with us today. We are very excited to talk to you. We wish you all the best and look forward to working together. Sure, with pleasure.